I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Who loves him this morning? Amen. Who's going to obey his teachings? Yeah. The Bible tells in John 14 that if you love him and will obey his teachings, that his father will love you. He said, peace I leave you and peace I give you. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be afraid. Amen? Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Whether you're with us um, on the phone lines or via Facebook Live, or whether you came out to worship with us in person. We thank you for choosing to worship with us. You could have been in elsewhere, but you chose to worship with us this day. Thank you for supporting our ministry here at Archers Road. Please remember our second shut-in. Uh, Sister Mildred Moody, mm -hmm. Brother Jack Garner, yeah. Brother Jimmy Petit, Sister Cheryl Allen, Sister Cheryl Allen, Chloe Enoch and family, Brother Dwight Wade, Carney of Austin, Brother Don Clay, uh, Sister Betty Tennant, Skip and Thelma de Grappery, our very own Reverend Jeff Cook, Frank and Betty Down, and uh, my son this morning, uh, Corey Turner, and the Sykes family as they mourn the loss of his uh, grandfather down in Miami. He uh, transitioned on yesterday. Now, again, I'll tell you, this ain't all the list, but just add it to your prayer list, if you would. Amen? Amen. Uh, I want to take a second to recognize uh, one of Archie Grove on my grandson, Joshua. Joshua, if you would, please stand. Amen. He's a... Uh, <laughs> He's here with us. Uh, he's back from Korea. Thank God for protecting him. Thank God for loving him. Real proud of this fellow. He's facing life's challenges head on. He loves to trust God. Becoming a wonderful young man. Proud to be a part of his upbringing and teaching. I guess you can have a seat, but I'm going to ask. We also got my granddaughter home for the summer. <laughs> Stand up, now, now. <laughs> She's home from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Her little sister came home, too. But she liked to hang out with her big mama, you know. <laughs> this one right here likes to follow Big Daddy. <laughs> Say, I'm, I'm too embarrassing, y'all. <laughs> but I love y'all on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, another announcement we have this morning um, from the scholarship committee. Uh, they said they only had one applicant to apply this year. And uh, she was awarded a scholarship. Uh, I don't see her this year, today, but uh, Ms. Tia Tucker, uh, congratulations to you wherever you are. We love you. Continue to do great things. May God continue to bless you. Amen. Um, without further ado, uh, I guess we'll start with the job ready. We'll do the doxology. If y'all would please stand. Oh, just one moment. I'm sorry. 
Um, let's get Tracy one more. Oh, okay. She was just reminding me to remind you. <laughs> We're going to have a church meeting this week. Um, I think um, church meeting will be Friday, correct? For the congregation. And uh, the executive board will meet on Thursday night before the church meeting. Yeah, okay. Uh, they'd like for the deacons to be here at 6.30, and then the executive board will meet at 7 o'clock. Amen? Amen. Amen? And all your members, please make sure you tell all your friends, all the rest of the members to be here Friday so they can take part in the decision-making process. They can hear what these uh, men of wisdom have, have to say take part in the decision-making process, and um, this is their opportunity if they don't come out and, you know, um, <laughs> well, they don't come out. <laughs> but um, they know what it is. All right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, we'll, um, we'll go into our dark solid. Praise God.
They are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out lamentations in blood such as to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely, I have a delight for inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him in my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask uh, Deacon King, if you don't mind, uh, please bless us with prayer this morning. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, and fruitful, and righteous, Savior, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your word. Yes, Jesus. We thank you for his honor. We thank you for his glory. But most of all, we thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection. That we all may have a right to the tree of life. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning with praise. We come with thanksgiving. We come with worship. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing. Every one of us. We thank you for blessing our families, our relatives, our friends, our neighbors. We thank you for blessing those of us who are oppressed, sick, afflicted, poor, and needy. We thank you for blessing the lost souls. We thank 
thank you for coming and sustaining your anointing. Continue to bless us throughout this day. God is through the Holy Spirit. Keep us in your care and protection. Try to stay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, and um, Deacon King, if you don't mind, while you're there, if you would, would please bless the offering to us. Um, are the guys out there saying uh, for the offering? Are they in there? Will they do it? Yes. Yes, would you please uh, come to the door with it, please? Thank you. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for this offering. Yes. We pray that it will be used for your building of thy people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
Jesus is gonna lead us there. Jesus is gonna help us to cross. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God 
had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the pledge, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Mm -hmm. He foreseeth this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven, but says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both the Lord and Christ. I want to speak to you from the subject for a short while this morning, this Jesus. Amen. This Jesus. Amen. When, when Jesus was doing a lot of teaching, he would always say, he who had ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if you are like me, I can have the TV on, I can have the radio on, I can be on the telephone, and someone in the house can be talking to me. I can be writing and reading a passage or something all at the same time. Let me say that again. I can be on the phone. I can be talking to someone in the house. I can be reading something. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then while all of that is going on, I don't know about your house, but my house. If my children are there, they're grown, but they still act like children when they come home. <laughs> so they're in the house going their own thing, listening to what they listen to, saying what they're saying. My grandboys are running up and down the steps, hey amen. Here and that ball, here, gun, here, doing this, doing that. I got two dogs, hey amen. One dog on the outside, man, because the other dog is in the house. Sitting at the window, looking, trying to wonder when I'm going to come out. The little dog followed me all over the house, hey amen. I can't hear this. I can't do anything in peace. So in other words, I said all that to say this, that in this life, you're going to have a lot of static going on. Amen. Every time you try to do something and focus on something, oh, static God. is going to come. Yeah. Static may come. Yeah. I mean, it may be someone who just gets on your nerve. Oh, yeah. You ever seen that person that just gets on your nerve? Yeah. They don't have to say anything. All they have to do is show up oh, and you're yeah. like, that person gets on your nerve. Yeah. Sometimes it's a situation that reminds you of a previous situation where you was in a bad way, man, and it looks like life is getting ready to come at you that way again. Yeah. That makes you tighten up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But there's something about this Jesus I'm getting ready to talk about. This yeah. Jesus. If this is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Pentecost was the birth of the church where the Holy Ghost ascended uh, down on the 120 and God had told to wait on him to come. Yeah. Now that's the way some are. Some will come to wait on the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then you will have others who will not come at all. And then you have others who come, but they sure are not waiting on the Lord. They're coming to do other things, amen. Because if you are coming in the name of the Lord that I know, you are coming in peace. You're coming in unity. You're coming to do things together. But we do know that, we, that the devil sends his people, even in God's house, Amen. to do their own thing. Amen. Amen. That's how you know the difference between some people and others, because the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. Amen. Holy Spirit has failed. Tongue of ass, clothing, fire, tongue of fire has fell down on the house. Y'all know it, right? Uh -huh. And there was a sound as a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then men began to speak with tongues. Amen. Now don't get this twisted because men are teaching this that they were speaking in an unknown tongue. The devil is a lie. Uh -huh. An unknown tongue means you don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. But, but, but the Bible said that they all understood what the others were talking about regardless of the language that they were speaking. I said all that to say this. When we come in this house, we are to all speak one language, and that's the B-I-B-L-E. That's how we get all mixed up and confused when we try to bring our own thing into God's house. We got to come to God's house when God said come and do it the way God said do it. No exceptions, no excuses. We must do it the way this Jesus said to do it. And when he got there, there was someone who said, hey, these men must be drunk. 
Peter said, no, no, they, they're not drunk. They're under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He began to break down uh, uh, what was going on to them. He said, and he used this sermon. This, this is what this is. This is the sermon of Peter. And I came and, and, and talked to you about the introduction of the sermon, amen. And now we're getting ready to go into the body of the sermon, amen. And all good sermons, y'all know y'all want us to hurry up and do it in 10 minutes and sit down so we can go on back and do what we're supposed to be doing. But the Bible says in verse 40 that Peter spoke not just what I'm getting ready to tell you, but he spoke many words, amen. Yeah, I told y'all all the time, like, y'all can't be with the devil six days and try to get Mike to talk to whatever other people. Because you know that this is the, it should be the end of the sermon. Ain't that right? 
That should be the, introdu in the, in the, the, the introduction, that should be the body, and that should be the conclusion. That the evangelism of the word, right? That all Amen. shall be saved. Amen. That salvation was coming to all men. Amen. He could have just parked it right there and sat down. Ain't that right? Amen. But he kept on going. Look what he said. He said, me of Israel, yeah. hear these words. Y'all yeah. know it, don't you? Jesus of Nazareth, the man whom uh, you arrested. Yeah, yeah. you, you arrested him. But, but y'all know who he was because he showed you his life through many signs and wonders who he was. And for this purpose, you delivered him up. You thought you did it, but it was the foreknowledge of God. Now let me break down to you what happened. Y'all saw a whole bunch of protests during Black Lives Matter, right? The different protests where people stood in front of a uh, 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 police station and, and they protested, ain't that right? And, and then when they saw, you saw the tear gas coming, all these things happened, all during history you see. Let me tell you what this brother just did. The same Peter who was afraid to acknowledge that he knew Jesus. The same Peter who was not at the cross when Jesus was crucified. The one who told him, I'll be with you, I'll fight with you, he was not there. That Peter. Look what happened when the Holy Ghost came upon him. When the Holy Ghost came upon Peter, Peter got bold. Y'all know what Peter preached this sermon at? Peter preached this sermon standing in front of the temple Amen. in Jerusalem. Y'all get what I'm saying? Amen. The same men who lied on Jesus and got him killed, Peter stood up right in front of Amen. where they were and he said to them, men, let me tell you something. This Jesus who you drug off and killed. So that, that seemed like a big thing, didn't it? But let me tell you what's bigger than that. Right beside where the temple was, Brother Curtis, was the Roman authority. Was the officials who the Jews lied and got them to go get Jesus. But the Romans had military. The Romans had power. Peter stood up right in front of the temple. Right in front of the Roman headquarters. He said, this Jesus, whom y'all drug off. Yeah, yeah. Y'all thought y'all was doing something. But we all understand that this Jesus, by the foreknowledge of his Father God, uh, brought him here to for this very point and time. He said, you took your Lord's hands and you drug him off and you crucified him and you put him to death. But this Jesus, whom you crucified, death couldn't hold him. Y'all know what I'm trying to I'm trying to tell y'all now that if you got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, life is going to do some things to you. You're going to feel like your best friend in the world can turn his back on you. Sometimes you feel like the job has a second to you.
standing up in front of the people trying to make himself important and he usurped the authority of his dad. So David decided to cause his son to turn against him. Don't look at me like that. The worst one who will beat you down is right in your own house. Your dad will destroy you. Your friends will destroy you. So they know more about you than anybody else. You be on the right side of them. They'll bring up the stuff that you don't forget about. Amen. Uh, I'm laughing when I read this. Yeah, y'all do remember David, don't you? The same David who, when Simon went with Saul, the first king, David, the first king of Israel, he was the people's choice, but he wasn't God's choice. <laughs> and when they chose Saul, after a while, he began to do his own thing. David was always a man after God's own heart. I heard a pastor say it this way. Uh, Jesse had seven boys, uh, but really eight, but he didn't count David. And he brought the seven boys before the prophet, amen. And the prophet tried to pour the oil out, and the oil wouldn't pump. Y'all, 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 say this up. <laughs> I take my oil out right here, and I turn it up, what's going to happen? They're going to come out angry. But if you see a full bottle of oil up here, and I turn it up, and don't nothing happen, what y'all going to do? Yeah, y'all do that. And, and the boys that, that the daddy lifted up was coming parading themselves before the prophet because they just wanted to be lifted. Uh, and what Samuel, the Bible says, he sat down. And Samuel said, I know you got uh, another boy somewhere. Amen. You got somebody. Amen. Oh, so, yeah, I got, I got David. He, he's out there in the field. Look, tended my sheep. Not the Lord's sheep. My sheep. Amen. 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 And, 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 and Samuel had a full vial of oil, amen. And the Bible said he poured it down on him. Y'all know how we do today. We just call y'all up, put a little oil on your head, yeah. put a brown face over yeah. there, amen. Back then they had a whole oil, they had a whole vat of oil. And they just poured all of it on your head till it just ran down all the way to your feet. In other words, God can't have a little bit of it. God got to have all of it, amen. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
and it truly, his tomb is with us to this day. In other words, as the earth, ash to ashes, and dust to dust, David is still gone. Mm -hmm. It says that, but the God that sworn an oath to him, this is to Jesus, that his, the fruit of his body, or the David, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on the throne. Second Samuel, he promised David, he promised uh, Saul, I mean Simon, that, 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 that no one was going to sit on the throne of David. Amen. And forever, amen, be on the throne. Y'all do know that that is this Jesus. Amen. amen. In the book of Matthew 1 through 17, go read the genealogy of David. And he'll tell you about the genealogy of Jesus and how Jesus came down through the bloodline of David, amen. And still can't understand how yeah. Jesus can be in the family of David and still be his Lord. That's called him was God and he was man. Yeah, yeah. this Jesus I'm talking about that came down to Mary, amen. And throw it down through the bloodline, amen. Yeah. This is Jesus I'm talking about. And so then it says that uh, God told the point that he was going to raise him from the dead. Verse 31, say what? He was seeing this spoke concerning look, the resurrection of Christ. Look, look, that, that, that his soul will be not left in Hades or hell, nor did his flesh see corrupt. See, it's time out for us uh, to stop trying to preach only heaven and don't say nothing about hell. Hell is a real place. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that hell is still hot. And hell is reserved for the devil and his imps and all of those who reject him, Jesus. That's what hell is. So I got to tell you every now and again at the pastor that you just ain't gonna get into heaven just by coming to church and preaching the same thing. You got to accept this Jesus. Amen. You got to accept this Jesus. So here we go. The church is birthed at Pentecost. Let the work a little bit. See, as the church, we have been bogged down and burdened with social and cultural ills. Amen. Ills even in our family. Amen. And even in the church. But you can't waver at the fact, amen, that everybody else has turned away from the Lord. You can't succumb to the pressures of this world. I wish I had one witness that would pray with me. That it's time to preach, amen, until folks get on fire for the Lord. It's time to preach, amen, to get this church for the word of God. It's time to preach, amen, to both come in the church and begin to do what they're supposed to do. In other words, church, we got to wake up this morning. We got to wake up and meet Jesus. We got to wake up and preach Christ, amen, until the sinners get convicted and fall out with the ways of the world. We got to keep on preaching Christ so folks can't come in the church living one night and lifting up Christ on the sun. Now, if you can't stop the fish, you either got to be in or you out, amen. So I'm telling you today, we got to preach, amen, to sinners get convicted, to the saints get on fire until we preach the laws, until we come together for the broken and preach it to those who are hurting, we'll come back in. I wish I had somebody that the power and the authority and the of Jesus. We got to do this thing. Because the Bible says that we are all witnesses. Yeah, we all witnesses. That God has raised up this Jesus from the dead. Mm -hmm. Verse 33, I'm about to finish because I know y'all trying to go uh, to the 4th of July and all that right there. And that's, that's all good, amen. But, but, but I got a word for you, amen. The uh, Bible says, therefore, verse 33, being exalted to the right hand of God. Y'all yeah. see, you got your Bibles open. Amen. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, yeah. he poured out this, what you now see. He said, what you see and happen is God working. And sometimes in the front of the term, how God will begin to work in the church, and some folk can shout and sing and clap their hands like some quick beat their tambourine. Yeah. The choir get excited, amen. There's always one sitting there that can't understand what is going on. See, Jesus, you got to understand that that's why God pour out his spirit. Yeah. And so when David did not send into heaven, uh, but he says unto himself, the Lord said to our Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make uh, your enemy your footstool. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus. Y'all see it? This Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Uh -huh. The hermeneutics of uh, Acts chapter 2 is that the church has to be uh, empowered to do what the Spirit of God has sent them to do. In other words, we are equipped by Christ. Empowered by the Spirit to evangelize the entire world. And then we do it in the name of Jesus. 
I'm talking about this chick who the angels were looking up when he went up to heaven. He had to let the boys know that that, that same Jesus that you saw go, the same mountain, you're going to see him coming. Amen. Y'all still there with me. But I'm going to preach when he comes back later. He's going to speak to somebody. We got to preach and make some disciples of the folks God loves it. Because all the end of the day, we're going to be in heaven. We got to understand that this Jesus, that God has given us the power to make disciples. That's the power of every day. That every name that God has given us a name. That's above every name. That that's the name of Jesus. Uh, God has highly exalted him. Y'all get it? That, that when he uh, finished uh, doing what he did,
He said that when we come together, yeah. some folks say we're going to church. Yeah. He said, but I'm having church. Amen. He said, well, what's the difference? When you go to church, amen, right. you can leave church and leave church right there. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all hear me now? Right. But when you're having church, yeah. amen, yeah. that means that the church is on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. You like the tabernacle in the wilderness that the Holy yeah. Spirit is set down on the inside of you and everywhere you go, God shows up. Y'all still don't get here. Put me in jail. Y'all yeah. know what's going to happen. This Jesus going to show up. Yeah. Yeah.
faithful lie, those who never accepted him. This is the opportunity to type it in and give your life to the Lord. You're going to have to come to our yeah. school. We go somewhere and get in God's word. Amen. Set up under some good teaching Amen. until you get strong enough to teach yourself. Amen. 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 Let's go. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all just say, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. If y'all know who we is now, I don't know what we have to do. I don't know what to do. Doors of the church is open. There are one who will come. The one who needs prayer. We need prayer. I'm standing to feet. I know it's COVID and we can't come, but I want all of y'all to come. Y'all know why? You might not believe that you need prayer. All of us need prayer. Amen. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's a little talk. Just a little talk with Jesus. Thank you. 